Hey, it's David. Early morning. I'm about one minute early, but I figure I just make sure everything's working okay. I have a brand new phone, and so um, hopefully it'll be really super um, detailed. This morning we're in Fax Lake, and this is Nipper Sink, and this is the bridge on Route 12. And let me just turn this over to show you. Nope, that's not the button. <laughs> here's the button. And so you're going to see here's the um, there's the lay of the land, and here's the, all the the um, poppies, lotus, lotus um, lilies, I guess you call them, lotus lilies. And here's what we're painting. We're going to paint a close-up of kind of like, I want to paint all of this. Um, and so if you can see right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a little bit of the of the parts right here. Let's get rid of that part so I can see. <laughs> and so let me bring this down a little bit. That's kind of a little early just so I can see because when it goes live, it's a little bit different than when I'm testing it. So here we're going to go down a little bit it back a little bit and so we're doing parts of the lilies I already um, put masking fluid down and um, what we're working on today is a is a panel um, it's a canvas panel that I um, took and I put this stuff on so it's a regular canvas panel that I used in that you use for like acrylics or whatever and basically what I did after I after I put this stuff on it, I absorb it just so ground. I put this on there so I can paint watercolor on it. And I'll be doing watercolor and gouache. So I've got both. I've got both in my palette down here. I've got the gouache here and this little, this is a, my gouache palette. And um, that's opaque watercolor basically. And it's not acrylic opaques. And hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I think I'm close enough. And there are cars on Route 12 that you can always hear go by but hopefully you won't hear hopefully you'll distort that a little bit but i'm going to be working like watercolor in the beginning but then i'm going to make it thick and i did use masking fluid um hold by masking fluid which will repel when i'm doing this but it's going to act like a piece of paper even though it's canvas with this stuff on it it's absorbent ground and absorbent ground makes it so that you can then do a watercolor you can also make your own i used holbein uh, gesso and they actually, they I, I think they even have one they sent me. I still have to use it yet. The kind of a ground that Holbein makes that's a, um, it's not called absorbent ground, but it's a medium, acrylic medium that you put down that absorbs. And so I'm going to try that too. Or you can take, and you can buy, um, what do you call it, um, marble dust, and you put that into the gesso, and it gives it also an absorption. So what you need when you're working with watercolor, it has to absorb kind of windy out here so hopefully you hear me well enough and hopefully it's not too too distorted the um the wind let me just real quickly tighten this and turn this hold on one second there we go all right so if again if you look over here you see that um, the sun is bright in my face and when you're working outdoors do not work with sun on your on your on your um paints or on your on your canvas or paper or whatever do not let the sun get on there you, you're gonna blow your eyes out and if you can tell i also put my palette top i put there so it blocks the sun and you can use an umbrella too and i usually put an umbrella on another tripod this actually this tripod which i'm using for my phone right now <laughs> but i put that on there and then i just um cover it so you don't work in the, with the light on the panel just don't do that now it's a little bit darker for you than to see um, see what I'm doing um, but you have to work that way otherwise you blow your eyes out <laughs> so I'm gonna start out right away I'm gonna put right through here I'm going to put um, leave the light of the canvas and I know that if it was an oil painting you put thick oil paints there and I may still do that but I'm gonna keep the water blue here and um, again if you want to see real quick it's I'm gonna keep the water blue so right here the water is blue and I took a section on the edge right over here. It's far away, um, but I'm just kind of made it up because I can't really draw exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's so many of these poppies in there. So I took a version of this and I kind of went in and just kind of placed them where I wanted to. And so then what I did is I put masking fluid down to keep them white so I can do these big washes. All right, and so let's just start out with the blue. And people were asking me, do I use 
you know, the Holbein uh, watercolors and together? Um, do you or use one at a time? Um, I use them together. I use the gouache and the watercolors together. They're basically the same thing, except Holbein gouache, the watercolor gouache, is more opaque. So it will cover more. So you just got to figure out. And But if you use a lot of water, then it's still going to be kind of... Um, it's going to be somewhat transparent. Even though it's opaque gouache, it can still be transparent depending on how much water you use on there. So I'm going to go in here now and just kind of... And I'm going to go right over these plants because most of these plants will be dark. So my basically fun... Or my... Um, oh, look at that. We got some rowers out there right now. Oh, you just can't see them. Oh, there's just a bunch of rowers that just went by. <laughs> so this is a, um, goes into Pistake, and so... You're gonna see a lot of boats going by there. Hopefully that won't be too bad. All right, and so I'm just gonna take this blue all the way through here, why? Because I want the blue to be parts that I don't see down in through here. So I'm just gonna keep it so it's nice and white right here, sparkly. But I'm gonna go through everything else and just fig figure out the big pattern is of my light and dark will be the water and the flowers are my light and everything else all the plant life will be all dark and it's a really simple black and white composition of that and I can see if you ask questions I can't see them all right so the wind is a factor but you can hear me okay that's good <laughs> I'm pretty close to the microphone so hopefully that will and you know, I'm not sure with these phones how they are good with the, how good they are with this wind. But it is a windy morning here in Fox Lake, Illinois, and so that I can't do nothing about. I could do it inside, but this is fun to show you how to do it outside too. You know, I don't do enough outside. I got to practice a little bit more because coming up, I'm going to be doing the Plain Air Fest in Mar Grand Marais, so I got to do a little 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 practice. <laughs> I haven't done practicing outside for a while, so. I'm going to do a bunch of it during the week this week and just get into the mood again of getting my setup and everything going well. So again, here's the... This is my lights. I'm putting my light blue in there. And it's not kind of nice. It kind of acts like paper, but it also acts a little bit like hot press because it, it sits on top. So I can then just make it... I like that look where it's on top. You can get some really nice watercolor washes. So I'm leaving that light down through the center here because the sun is straight in my eyes, straight in my face. And it will also make these um, flowers. And this one will be a dark one because if, if the flowers are against the sun, then they're dark. If you have questions, just go ahead and ask. Um, so Pam asks, what do you do differently with the vertical plein air panel versus the flat? Vertical, um, well, I do, the only, I do the vertical here um, only because of the camera setup. I don't want to go downwards. And also, it blocks the sun for me if I keep it vertical here. So you just got to realize how much paint you're putting down so because it, it's going to run downwards. And so you're going to get a different look because everything's running down. In a downwards position so that you can't nothing do nothing about and so I don't care about it and I just I've learned to um, demonstrate a lot of times vertically so that people can see it and I just know how much paint to use so that then when I'm painting it will stay if I need it to stay I just use a lot a lot of paint lots of paint makes it stay closer and I will put a little bit of green in the areas right here of the of the big got some fishermen out there right now and um, I actually saw him about 15 minutes ago catch a huge it looked like a pike or maybe a walleye out there it was pretty big I don't think it was a bass but yeah he was um, fishing out there and he caught a big one he was by himself now he's with somebody you can see right there two fishermen right there so they're Fishing we out early this morning, and if as an artist too, you should be out here pretty early. You know when you're going to do some nice painting, because the sunlight is just beautiful in the morning, coming across across the lake, and 
it used to be way back there but now it's a little bit more right here it was not being the picture but it's nice how it just came into into the picture now I'm putting my lights in of the darks this is going to be the, the light part of the darks and so I'm just going to let that bleed in with the other part and I will I'm kind of inspired by um, Steve Puttridge Steve Puttridge has been doing some really beautiful flowering paintings and um, you know just beautiful plant life he's been doing really beautiful sketches and oil paint now he's an oil painter and a watercolorist but he's been doing plein air some of the oil of the plants and stuff are just absolutely gorgeous and it was very inspiring so this morning before i left i thought i just look at his work and it's always good to you know if you like somebody's work um take a look at it before you're actually going to go out and you're practicing it's kind of fun to see and it'll give you a little idea of how maybe you want to handle parts of your painting too if you like certain things about my painting you know definitely go try try it see how it works it doesn't bother me if you kind of use it I'm, I'm a teacher and i actually don't mind you using my techniques if you can see something that i do go right ahead and try it now it's looking like it's drying pretty light when i'm doing this so i'm going to go in through here and see, I'm just kind of doing the big picture right now. And again, I'm doing my lights. Now, my light flowers are already done because they're going to be white and, I'll, and they have masking fluid on them, which, you know, oil painters, they just put on the big thick stuff later. But I'm just doing my lights right over my flowers because they're going to be, they're going to be light when I take the masking fluid off. So let's get a little bit bluer down here for the water in between because if you look, it's kind of pretty dark. See how dark it is, the green? So I'm getting the light parts right now, but the greens will be very dark underneath all this. And so I want some beautiful washes. What I'm trying to do is some beautiful, colorful, light washes. And so when it's dripping, I kind of like that. I kind of like it. And actually, they have a bunch of stems here, so why not let some of it drip? So I'm gonna put some green, and it looks like I'm running out of leaf green. So I'm gonna, I want it to be a little bit more water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can't get it to run on its own with a lot of water. See how this part right here is just running? And that's cool because it'll look like those are like stems. And again, you always start step one is your lights. So do your lights first. And my setup right here, you can tell it's the Sienna Plain Air um, setup from Jack Richardson up in Wisconsin there. Um, he has this great pallet um, holder, and now it's vertical, and it was a little bit smaller panel, so I could have put it down, but I put it right here, because normally I do it on these little, these metal things, but it was too too short a, a panel, too small a panel to get it go down that far, unless I didn't do it right. Maybe I didn't do it right. I had to look. I probably didn't do it right. <laughs> I have to go back there and look how I'm going to do it. Again, I, mean, I love this running this in, in this. I'm going to spatter a little bit too, you know, I'm doing my lights, so spatter in there and just give it a little texture. I know it's all going to be darker on top of that, and but I need to have the under underpainting, I need the lights in there. And I need to have the lights so that they stay beautiful, you know, and just get some beautiful color in there. And These lotus plants are just simply amazing. I mean, the huge, huge leaves. And they have these little veins in them, they, and they're just beautiful. I took about 100 pictures of them so far, so I'll be doing a lot of indoors too. But it's nice to see them outdoors and paint them outdoors because then you get to see the real colors, the real, the way they act and how the wind is blowing on them and how they fold over and all that kind of stuff. Really, you know, it's good to see real. And even when you take a picture, and it'll remind you by if you see them real. So I'm mixing both my acrylic and my, not my acrylic, my um, gouache and my watercolor together just because, um, like I said, it's like when I'm using a lot of liquid, if I'm using a lot of water, then it doesn't matter because it's going to be, it's gonna, still going to be transparent, but it kind of covers a little bit better and you can see more granulation because there's more granules in, more granules in the paint. So we're going to keep this light up here and 
and then where you can still put in some waves and so you're getting the first step is still I'm still on my first step and I, if you've been following me for a while now on my Thursday nights you realize that I do every painting in three steps the first step is my lights and I establish my colors so I get my colors established and then um, my step two is my large mediums and my large darks that's step two which I'm not there yet I'm still doing my I'm still doing my my lights my big darks on this one and my big mediums will be the actual um, the big leaves the big um, the big huge leaves of these gigantic enormous um, leaves let's get a little bit more I'm getting a little bit darker blue uh, some of the water is gonna be showing through here because you're gonna see water poking through I want some waves here because there is a little bit of waves going on there. I use Ultramarine for this. I've been using Ultramarine and um, white, of the, white of the canvas and a little bit of Horizon Blue. Horizon Blue is a little bit of a kind of a turquoisey blue. It's a little bit of waves. And look at those. Isn't it fun? The drips. The drips are fun. And, you know, Steve does that a lot with his oils, and it really inspired me to get out here and do a nice, really beautiful, almost like an oil painting wash. And Because um, uh, when you do a first, when you do an oil painting, you can do it as beautiful washes like Richard Schmidt used to do, these big, huge background washes, and then you get thicker and thicker, which I will be getting pretty thick. I want to I wanna try to use my gouache thick, like, a, like an oil. And this, again, like I said in the beginning, I did use this absorbent ground. This is what makes it the watercolor adhere to my canvas. Now, this is a canvas panel. This is a cheap canvas panel from from Walmart actually because I had to <laughs> had to run and get something when I was up in Dillman's last last time and I, I found these panels and they were pretty inexpensive and I just used them. All right, so there's my lights. There's my lights. Now we're going to go to our mediums large mediums and large darks and that's basically all the petal all the leaves the flowers are going to be last because they're going to be light and i'm going to pull off the masking fluid and hopefully it'll dry by then so i can do that now the foreground um the foreground big leaves are going to be brighter more contrast than these background ones because you want it to lay flat i want it to go back to the back so back here i'm going to make those a little bit lighter the green and um, I'll, I still want to make them darker than my light area, so I will start out here little by little and make them and put a little bit of put a little blue in there too. And they have a little green and blue, and they have the little stems, and so a little bit darker. And they got these pods, these beautiful little pods. When the, once the leaf, once the flower is gone. You get these little pods that look really cool too because usually when flowers are done they're usually pretty bad but these are like pretty neat they're, they're like a little pod it looks like they're almost gonna be a, they're almost like a little flower and you see a little pod right there but they look pretty cool and they're above the water so it's kind of neat that these 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 um, leaves are above the water and not in the water like lily there are some lily pads in there and, and mixed in with these big pods and so those are in the water, but I'm really, I think I just love the fact that they're coming way out of the water, these, these, these leaves. It's a cool thing about them. That's why I, I like these stems and stuff. The stems just go down and they're above the water. I've never, um, there's a couple things I did this week I never saw before. And these were one of them. I, I knew I saw them bef uh, a while ago because um, I lived... When I grew up, I grew up on Grass Lake, and there's supposedly there was all these was covered the whole lake of Grass Lake here in the Chain of Lakes in Illinois, and um, and I remember they're saying that the whole lake used to be these big big lotus plants and stuff, but this year these are really I, I took them in four different spots. They have, took them here, I took them on, on our lake, um, Long Lake, which I live on Long Lake. They have them there. And so I took a couple pictures there, across the bridge or some more. So yeah, so they're all over. They're all over um, the chain of lakes this year. And probably I were, but I just didn't never went looking for them. I just realized, it's like, wow, these things are just gorgeous. So now I'm gonna get a little bit darker, a little bit darker, more contrasty. 
and try to make my my greens really dark so I mix my greens with all my blues and my cranacridum gold which I have to look for here because I'm using my outdoor palette and that's another reason I wanted to start um, coming out here and, and figuring out which my where my um, where my colors are in my palette because <laughs> this is my plein air palette and it's different from my from my studio palette which I got to change that I got to make so that they're all the same and so I'm looking for my Cranecridum Gold which I can't quite find at the moment I think it's this one in here ah yes there it is so I'm putting these darks in because I have to see I want to kind of establish my darkest dark and looking to see which one of these this is my center of interest these flowers right here so I'm going to look and basically it's underneath and inside the middle of the uh, inside the middle of the flower there's a really dark it goes really dark in almost like a little bugle horn they go down deep into the into the thing and so it's really cool the the plant and some of these stems will be really dark and I'm going to try to make some of these flowers against the really dark dark green Kind of going all over trying to establish my darks and so the fact that i'm trying to get some yellow in here i just have to think that's the background this is foreground so these back here have to be a little bit lighter i'm gonna have to mix a leaf green because i ran out of mix leaf green here and the reason i used masking fluid is because i don't want to have to go around all these flowers so like this one right here I'm just going to go right over it, and that way, when I take the masking fluid off, it'll just shine. It'll be really nice. It'll just shine right up there. But you have to realize that it is going to be lighter later, and so then you make sure that you put a dark over it so that it comes back to a nice, a nice light. It's going to come back to white, basically, to the panel. Now, I've never tried it on this canvas with the gesso on it, so... Hopefully it comes off. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm certain it will come off, but I'm not quite sure. I've never used it on there before, so we'll see. A lot of this is kind of abstractish. That's a word, abstractish. <laughs> and um, but I'm looking to just fill it and make it come forward and get things darker as they come forward, and see if I can get the. These stems on this side are darker, and, the, and as they go over here, they get lighter. So, because they're against a light or against a dark, so their juxtaposition. And also, I want some of this dark to drip too. So, make it. I'll make it a little bit thicker. I'll try to make it a little bit thicker. And I do want to try to figure out a couple of these big leaves and try to really establish them as singular by themselves. Kind of like this one right here. I want to take a couple of them and make sure that you see what they actually are. So that you can kind of tell instead of having everything abstract. of just a big thing. So a couple of them I do want to make it look like exactly like what it is. Again, as we come forward, we're getting darker. And even though you're getting darker, you want to get a little bit more colorful too. So let's get a little bit of, um, seems like there's a little bit of orange as you're coming forward. And since we're using a lot of blue and green, we're going to use some orange red and some of this stuff up here, just so that you have a little bit of that color in there to get it warmer. So a little bit of Cranectinum Gold you can get in there. And also some of that blue, remember that blue is going to shine through here a little bit. Let's just do a beautiful wash here. You know, the nice thing too is that you can rub out. Like later on if I want to rub out, because it's not acrylic, so I can rub this out. So let's just do some fun splashes on here. And just let it run a little bit. And get a nice wash going there. Because I know it's going to have to be dark. Because the flowers are going to be my light. And so everything that I'm doing now is my darks. Everything I'm doing now is my darks.
Morning, car. Good morning. I'm so glad you are doing this today. I made an attempt yesterday, plain air. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I saw that you had asked me a question about the one painting for the no tan. Um, I didn't get a chance to look at it really close, but from the small part I could see, it may be a little bit too busy. So you may want to, um, I'll, I'll look at it again when I get this afternoon. And I will see to see if um, it looked like it was a little bit too too much, not simplified enough. I would maybe simplify it a little bit more. The no tan, the black and white value pattern it seemed very um, seemed very busy from the very small, less than a half an inch picture that I could see. <laughs> I really couldn't look at it because um, I was setting up here and drawing here, so I didn't have a, quite enough time to look at it yet. So see how I'm just letting things run down here because I wanted to be out of focus and, and so we'll have some fun with that later and we're going to put it on thicker. We're going to put it on thick because I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and then and once it's dry I'm going to take my masking fluid off and then we'll see what the white is and then we'll have fun with it. This is, this is so much fun boy. Like right now, it shouldn't, you know, I know I tell my students, you know, until you, until you get to the dark details, step three, it shouldn't look too much too good yet. <laughs> I mean, you don't have any details yet, really. You're having large areas of light and dark, and so there's not much detail, because that comes later when you're doing your dark details, step three. And I'll be putting shading in here and all kinds of different things in here. But right now I'm just going for the big parts and I'm trying to do some really beautiful washes is what I'm thinking. It's like, how can I make these washes look really cool and interesting? And they just have to be dark. Right now they just have to be dark. My light is already done and my flowers are already done because I have masking fluid. So these are all just an interesting darks is what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to make my darks look very interesting. No, not with black. I don't need to have black in there. Let's get some more green, dark, dark green in here. Let it float downwards. This will pop out the areas here. It'll be like underneath the in this area too. Let's just let's put some nice leaves in there, and you can kind of establish like a look for your painting. Like you can make it look like these type of plants by doing a brushwork across, because you know they're basically round and like an oval shape. And then later on, we can do the detail of them. But right now, we're just getting an overall shape of them. And I'm also going to, I notice, notice what I'm doing is I'm making these things dark. And so the little parts that are going to be light, the parts that of these big leaves are going to be light, I'm going to put them in with opaques. I'm going to put them in with um, gouache so that um, they'll look, it'll almost look like an oil painting when I get done with this. A little bit opaque here. See how the darks are now from light to dark and it's like coming forward. And my center of interest will pop out really nicely. I'm going to try to stay away from my flowers right now because I do have to let them just dry so that I can take it off. Otherwise, we're going to be here for a long time if I don't let it dry a little bit. <laughs> I'll spatter a little bit again. Spattering is just a technique that um, kind of gives it texture. That I really like. I really, you know me, I love to do the spattering. And out here, it doesn't matter. You're not getting anything too dirty. The grass behind it would be okay. Yeah, I, mean, I can't wait to put the thick details in because I'm actually going to use my opaques and I'm just going to make them thick. Like you're doing oil painting. Now, I couldn't enter it into like a TWSA because it'd be too thick, but you know, that doesn't matter. I, I'm I just want to try to get that look. Oh, we got an ant up here. Look at the ants crawling through my picture. <laughs> he thinks it's real. See, the ant thinks it's real. <laughs> He's on the top of the... Get off of there. Oh, now it's in my paint. There's some of the strangest, strangest sounds around here. Now, let's get a little bit more of that orange in there. Remember I, I was saying a little bit more reddish orange in there? Because otherwise we don't have enough of the warm color in front here. So let's get a little bit of that in there. A couple of these little stems. Alright, so it's time for our dark details. Our dark and light details 
for this one because um, because I am doing gouache and while I'm letting this dry a little bit I'll just remind everybody again that this is a panel this is a um, this is a canvas panel it's not um, it's not a piece of paper it's not a and I've been working standard sizes now because then I'll just wax it I'll wax it with cold wax after I'm done and you just stick it right into a frame no glass no mat board just stick it right into a frame and it's a watercolor I'll call it a watercolor because it is it's uh, gouache is also watercolor this is watercolor gouache it's still watercolor it's just gouache watercolor now um, a lot of people use acrylic wash and that's fine too acrylic washes you can mix it together I just don't like using acrylic wash with my watercolors because I gotta separate them because on uh, my palette because otherwise it sticks and it stays forever because acrylic wash is acrylic and it's, it's rubber basically <laughs> so I don't want to do that now I think I can rub this off with my finger so yeah this is one up here that so now they're just gonna come back and I just um, I have to definitely wait till it dries but once it's dry, I'm just going to use my fingers and look at how easily it just comes right back. It's canvas, so they'll all come right back. I do have to wait for it to dry a little bit, but it's kind of windy out here, so this will be drying in at least, you know, two minutes it'll be dry. i get on this side, rub this part off. And I also did some of the stems light so that I have a little bit of light stems in there. And you can feel, when you go over it, you can feel the, where the masking fluid is. And for anybody that doesn't know what masking fluid is, it's a, it's a rubbery substance that you put on. And it, it, I could put a wash over it, let it dry, put that on there. And it just protects that area. And then you put your watercolor over it. And the nice, nice thing about Holbein watercolor is a lot of times it repels. Not so much as on paper, but here, because you can tell it's right here. And is that still wet? You make sure it's totally dry because you don't want to have even a little bit of wet because then you just, like I did there, I, I, I rub it into the... And, and this comes off really easily on this canvas compared to sometimes paper that's soft. It's a little bit harder, but see how you can just peel it off? Now the big one I got to wait because that's still wet there and... Ask a question so I can, <laughs> we can ask this. Same frames you use for watercolor paper, but just remove the glass or plexiglass. Um, yeah. So what I do is I just um, well, not, I don't use the same frames because the frames are too skinny. Because you know you need it for, for this is 11 by 14. This picture is 11 by 14. So I would use a frame that's about you know four inches thick, so that you makes it look like like a plein air frame has it look like it's a mat on it. You know the the frame is like a mat because it's wide and that's how come the plein air frames are like flat for a little bit and then they get the little curve at the end and there's all these different kind of modern frames that I know ampersand right now is making some frames modern frames that are also for panels so that you just pop them in you put the um, the points the point driver you take a point driver staple them into your frame and you're done you just frame it really simply no more glass and then you can also charge more for them so why you would not do that I'm not sure why people would not want to do that And I know uh, somebody, somebody in my class yesterday said, well, my don't look like oils, but that's okay. They don't have to look like oils. They can still look like watercolors, and it's fine. And you can use the wax, and it doesn't have to be shiny. It doesn't have to be shiny. It can just be, um, you know, regular like you normally do. And you're just taking it off. And see how it just pulls things off? And I can still go around them now, and I can still put white paint in there. I'm still gonna have to go in them anyways because I gotta, I have to go in there then and get the, um, make them look like they're you know three dimensional. I still, I have to wait for here a little bit. This is still a little wet. Over here maybe. Get on the side of the painting. Instant flowers. See how nice that is? That just comes right instantly. Comes, up. And, you know, like I said, too, if I wanted to, I could then go in here and just use white paint to do the same thing, make it really thick. Take pure white paint and put it on there, which I could still do. You know, if I feel like I want to put a little bit more flowers in there, I could still do that. That's no big deal.
instantly comes out there. And I think this part's drying out too. So there's a big one right here. There's a couple of them right here. I just gotta make sure that it's dry. Sometimes if you pat it down, you can see. But sometimes if you have a, a little bit of paint on the actually masking fluid, then it sometimes rubs into the white area, which again is not won't be that big a deal. So what I try to do is I try to make a little like a rolling pin out of it. I roll it and then I grab it and I just pull and it just kind of comes. See how I just pull it? it just comes right off. Is a big little. So you just keep on pulling it and it comes all off at once. Not sure where else I have it. There's one right down here, but this is all still wet down here. So let's see if I can get this part. Ah, see that that was still wet, and so I made it just put, made it green, <laughs> which is okay down here. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make it. There we can go. All right, so there's my light, um, my lights, and I, I'm gonna go in here and see if I can. They also did some of these stems, and here I did one little one of those buds things. They, there's like little pods when you get done, they're like little pods that you can. When these when these plants are done, they 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 make these little pods things. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go in here and do our dark details and light details. So I'm gonna use my smaller brush and I'm just gonna go in here and work on making the flowers look great and making and they're basically white. A little bit of yellow in them they're kind of yellowish but pretty white and with all the green around it it makes it kind of look yellow underneath here so I'll take a little bit of yellow and like this one is gonna be a darker one because it's against the light and so I'm just gonna I'll use a little violet and a little bit of yellow that'll make it a little bit of li lilac and so this one is going to be, you know, against the light. And so that one's a little bit darker. I can put a little green in there too, because there's definitely going to be green reflecting in there. And these are details. I mean, not, don't, don't hold back now. Go as detailed as you want. Definitely um, make it look like the plant that it is. And of course, these are going to be more detailed than this one. But these can be pretty detailed now. Everything is about details now. Like this, this little... Um, I'll do a couple little pads in here too. Just little, little, those little pads there. And so I'm just getting as much detail in here as possible. And I'm working back to front. So I'll get these things in the back here done first. And I just learned about um, Davies Gray. Davies Gray. So it's my gray. <laughs> um, Davies Gray is a greenish gray. It's really kind of like, it's really nice for... Um, plain air painting greens it's a little bit of gray because um, I think most of the time when you're mixing or using greens from the tube most of them are way too vibrant you know and, and a lot of these greens are very gray and very orange so um, this Davies green Davies gray is really a kind of a nice color I think it's this color right here it's a little bit of green greenish gray Almost like a, um, almost has a little bit of orange in it. Get a little bit of blue in here. And you notice how I'm working back. I'm working from the back to the front. And so I'm gonna get this back there. So I know that I don't wanna get too detailed back here. So that when I get it here, it's gonna be really detailed. But I wanna get this done back there so I don't have to go back into that area. But it's so quiet here, um, even though I'm right next to the highway. Um, that's the only loud thing about it here is, is the loud highway. And the ducks are screaming at me. <laughs> 
But you know, it's like one thing about um, plein air painting. It's just, it's so much fun being out here and just hearing and seeing things that you don't see when you're in your studio. Yes, it's lovely being in your studio. I love being in my studio painting. And uh, it's just a whole different thing though. I mean, what, what, how nice is it? Whoa, okay, that boat just took off. <laughs> So here now, and I, let me show you, you can also rub out. Let's say we want to rub out an area like this flower. It got a little dark right here. And I didn't masking fluid it off, so I'm just going to rub it out. See how you can just rub it back to light? And you can also make things, you know, I can take the, do up and down here a little bit and blot it. And you can just get little stems that are light. Or these pods, I'm going to make these pods. They're kind of like a greenish color. So this pod right here, I'm just going to kind of go in there. Clean up my flowers a little bit. And definitely, you know, see how the flowers are going to have a little bit of an orangey, orangey yellow in this, in this to them. So, like, the one, the, the leaf itself, you should do the lights first, the leaf itself. And they're all kind of yellowy. But I kind of like them white, so I'm going to leave some of them white with a little bit of yellow. You don't have to make them totally like they are there. I mean, they are very yellowy. So let's just real lightly put some yellow, but I'm going to leave a little bit of white just to kind of show that they're really bright. Maybe the rim lighting. Maybe I'll do a little rim lighting on them. I'm using Hansa yellow for this um, for this yellow because Hansa yellow is kind of like an um, opaque-ish. Um, it's like a yellow with white in it. Hansa yellow. So this is the light part of the flower, and then what I'll do is I'll go in and do the darker parts that are in front of it. Like there'll be darker leaves in the front side of it because it's shining through, and the uh, light's kind of shining through, but that's the shadow side. Yeah, Ampersand, um, they, they, they have a line of frames that they made for their panels because they make watercolor panels, and they make pastel panels and all, I mean a lot of the companies right now are making panels because of the fact that we don't want to put um, matte board and glass on them because you can make more money if you if you don't put glass on them and a lot of galleries don't even take paintings watercolor paintings that have glass on them because they're just it's because of the cost because they can they'd rather sell an oil painting that they can get more money for than make less money on an oil on a watercolor so we're, us watercolors are starting to get smart and thinking, okay, let's just do a watercolor, but let's let's um, let's wax them, and the wax works just as well. As a matter of fact, it works better than varnish because it doesn't yellow, and then it gets protected. It's protected by the wax, the uh, cold wax. And I've got those uh, um, I've got those videos out there. You can just go to my video to my YouTube channel, and you can find me waxing. It's very simple. You just buy it and rub it on there. I should have brought it with. I could have shown you on this one. And so now here's I'm getting the color, a little yellow, and here and these parts over here too. I am gonna make maybe a little bit of white. I'll put some thick white in there too. And what I can do is like when I'm putting in the the, the petal that's farther forward, I can actually make it thicker too. Like see, this is a little bit thicker, and so I can make it look like it's in front. A little thickness to it and if I feel it's too dark I can put even more paint on that and just make it thicker you know this is this is like gouache this is like using it like like a like an oil paint it's really thick I'm actually putting it on like a lot and so it's got a texture to it that's how thick it is it's got it's so thick that I'm getting a texture like it's bumpy which is what it, which oil painters love. That's their that's their thing. Where watercolors don't have a they have that in them. They have more of a, a fresh wash. See, I'm just going to put this thickness in there. And you can get as detailed as you want. You know, you can go really detailed if you want, down to you know really fine details. I 
I like a little bit more of the yellow in this, so a little bit more yellow. Let's get it thicker. So you really can't make a mistake because you just put it on there thicker. You know, you just put it on right over it because it's opaque. It's opaque and it will cover up any of your mistakes, which, which you're not going to make. You're not going to make mistakes. You're just going to go in there and just paint. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, waxing is so easy. It's just so easy, and it just... And I, I like the look of it. I like the look of it being in these in these frames better than with the mat board now. And let's do some of these big parts of the leaves here with thickness. Here I got all these little pods. Let's see how far we're going in here. So we've got how many more minutes? So it's 45 minutes so far. We're going to try to keep it to an hour, like my Thursday nights. It's my dad's birthday today, and he he was in the hospital again for a little bit, but he got out, and they finally figured out he's having, he's got a little bit of dementia, but he gets these seizures where he just kind of looks like he's not living. <laughs> and so he went to the hospital twice in the last couple of weeks, and they finally figured it out this week. So I've been dealing with that a little bit, and so um, I'm so happy that they finally figured out that my dad is having seizures, that we can, and he takes pills, and so it doesn't, won't have them anymore. So that was a really nice thing to happen. <laughs> so today's his birthday, and so this afternoon, after I have to get done painting here, we're having a little family gathering for my dad. He turns 89 today. Okay, here we got a little bit of this, leaves. A nice leaf here. Look at this is thick now. See how I'm getting it really thick. I'm just putting it in front. A little pod here, a little pod, make it nice and thick the pod. A little bit of yellow, maybe make it lighter. Yeah, I like these pods to be a little lighter and thick with thick paint. Here let's make a make the leaf a little bit darker. And I, yes, it is opaque, and that's okay for me. I actually like that look. And just look at this one to do over here, and then we're getting pretty close. Let's get a little bit of the... Yeah, I really like this yellow here, this opaque yellow. I'm not sure what color that is. I gotta start looking to see what these colors are that I have of gouache, because I really... I just took them in here when I first started using gouache and I didn't, I forgot to look at the, the names of them. I just put them in my palette because I got a bunch of them from Holbein. I use Holbein, everything. And um, they have great paints. I think. I think I need a leaf right here, and then we're all good. So I'm gonna make a dark, uh, a thick, I'm gonna make a thick, light green here of a leaf. Let's see, I'm using it thick and opaque wise, and I can put white in there, and I can make it thick, and, and then maybe I'll put it light, or put dark underneath it, So this is definitely not traditional watercolor. So if you want to do traditional, don't use the um, don't use gouache <laughs> because that is not traditional when you're using um, transparent watercolor. This is if you want to make it look a little bit like an oil and a watercolor together. It's just my own little technique that I'm trying to establish and trying to figure out because when I do this planar painting, I want it to look a little bit more. Um, like an oil, I guess, because it's just, they look, I love the thickness of the paint. And that's switching to oils, and um, gouache is the next best thing. And I know a lot of people are actually using gouache now for that purpose. A little dark underneath here. I'm look at it from a distance, and I think we're pretty good here. 
let's put some light highlights like um because there's a lot of sparkle in the water up here and so let's um first put a dark in there and then I'll, what i'll do is i'll put the light little sparkles going right down through here because it would have sparkles in here which it does if i look down there's some really bright sparkles in the water because anytime water hits water hits a area and it's like a mirror so it's sparkling sparkling up in my eyes into my eyes so let's do that with white paint that would be the last thing we do. And also that's part of my lights. That would be part of my light area. And so I'm taking pure white. I'm going to have to clean it up here a little bit first. I take my paper towel. I just dip into this little thing here. Get the top a little bit of that's in there. So I'm taking pure white. And what I'll do is I'll go in here and put little dots all around. Even up here. I can use some white to, for the, well that's actually not white white like the canvas, because it's a little bit, I need to get a pure white um, thing in my thing so that one I use for mixing and one white I use for just pure, because it, once you use one, it's hard to get it back to pure white <laughs> if, you're, if you mix something with it. And these little dotsy little dots that look like it's shiny water. Sparkle, sparkle. Here, I'm going to put a little white lily pad in here. And you can't do enough white dots, really. And on the side of the stem, you can put little dots because the stem, it's wet. These things are wet and they sparkle. When, when things are wet, they sparkle. And like I said, you you can't put enough dots in there, really. <laughs> it's, if you look at if you look at this right there, look at how much sparkle is in the water. It sparkles like crazy. And see down here, and right here, look at all that sparkle that's right through there. A lot of sparkle. Pure white. Some people even like to take it right out of the tube when you're using it that thick. And just take it out of the tube and just put it on there super, super thick. And that's the nice thing about watercolor is that you tend to get that um, white sparkle of the paper with the masking fluid, but I'm not going to be putting masking fluid on there and I can just put it with white paint just as nicely. Top of these little things I'll do. All right, guys, I think that's it. And we're a little bit under an hour. See, there you go. <laughs> so, guys, thanks again for stopping by here. And if you have any more questions, Kyra's birthday, your dad's birthday today, too? All right, awesome. Tell him happy birthday. <laughs> Is the green color you mentioned baby's green uh, Holbein paint? Um, the green I'm using, um, Davy. Davy, like my name, Davy's green. So, Davy. Instead of David Green, it's Davies Green. Davies Green. And yes, Holbein makes it Davies Green. All right. And your dad is 93. Or I think I see that. 93. <laughs> I have my glasses on. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot for um, coming by today. This Sunday. And here you can see again. And there's there's a picture we doing, did. And of course, I made up a little bit of it. Because you have to, in a big scene like this, you know. I took a part of it and I took it way back there way in the distance way I took this part right back there so I, I, I basically painted that little spot right there I know there's a big area you can also do that you could make this whole foreground right here and stuff and go with that but I decided to come more towards oh okay why did it change it oh there we go oh went back and forth so yeah so this is what we got and um, kind of fun all right we'll see you on Thursday and this week we're painting actually car. I think we're going to do your picture that you sent me for our thing. We're going to do um, a, a scene with a lot of green leaves and a little bridge. So that's going to be the painting for next week. We'll do on Thursday. So until next Thursday, we'll see you then, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>